Hello everybody, today we're going to be unboxing a Bosch Gas M extractor and I say we because I've got Bob from Bosch here, Hi. formerly known as Bob Bosch, Bosch Bob, various <laughs> names. Bob knows a lot about Bosch tools and do you want to quickly explain what you do? Yeah, I mean uh, I've been with Bosch for quite a number of years now, I'm not going to uh, tell everybody how many but uh, a number um, and I'm now one of the two trainers that we have here in the UK. Um, we have uh, quite a lot of trainers around the world. Well, not that many, 40 roughly. Um, and I'm just one of two here in the UK. So yeah, we're gonna get unboxing this extractor. Bob's gonna talk us through all the little bits and little things that you should know about when you buy the extractor. And we're just, to be honest, we're gonna completely wing it. So um, yeah, let's go. So. Do you want me to explain to the, to, to the good people out there that this is in some ways a little bit of a spoof because after your uh, project with the guitar, the dust control was absolutely appalling, bad man. So what we decided was, look, we had to help a little bit here and um, we made sure that Matt got one of these vacs um, some months ago. But what we decided that would be nice if we did a proper unboxing. That's it. And like I say, talk through all the little bits of it. And um, yeah, like I say, Bob gives lots of little tips as well throughout <laughs> this whole thing, hopefully. So have you got a knife? Yep. Let's go. Knife. So first of all is we get this nice blue hose. Five meters, anti-static as standard with all the M classes. We get a couple of cable um, and hose tidies. A crevice nozzle. Oh. Lovely name. <laughs> Angled spout, a wet and dry head, more about that in a moment. Three tubes, a set of instructions, please don't be afraid. This is in 375 languages, <laughs> just joking. Um, you actually have to read about four pages. And then finally, as Matt knows, my biggest hate of all, the black bin bag. I have fought long and hard with our colleagues in Germany about this but more about that in a minute when we show you how to put it all together. But yeah, this is one of my favorite things about this as well. The smiley cardboard that you get with it. That's a smiley face. Oh, smiley face. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I only saw it the other weekend. So, here we have it. 35 liters, um, automatic filter cleaning, wet and dry. So first thing is you just slide those on there and then you've got somewhere to wrap your hose around and then little elastics to put there on there. At the back here we've got a simple hook for the cord. Yeah, um, We tried retractable wheels on experimental models to wind the cable in. When they're brand new and clean and tidy they work fantastically. Mm. But in the real world when they get dusty these things start to jam up. So we, we stayed with the simple things. This is your power takeoff. Okay there is a 110 volt version. We then got a selector here for different size uh, hoses so we can reduce the amount of uh, suction for different size hoses and then we have a three position switch off in the center on all the time okay and then on which is activated via the trigger on whatever machine you've got plugged in and then this one here is to adjust the amount of suction mm -hmm. if you've got a sander for example you don't want to stick it to the work because you've got so much suction which is something i always wondered like yeah. why you would actually reduce this i yeah. always assumed it would be affecting the motor somewhat by straining it pulling through too much air i never thought about the fact that it would actually be sucking that sander down exactly. to the surface so the other thing you can do on that is if you look on the end of the hose here you've got this little red, red um, collar if you turn that you can see you can actually open up that vent and that also um, reduces the suction as well i've actually had people ask me well doesn't the dust extract uh, cut fall out of there well actually no because there's a 1200 watt motor up here sucking it down the hose so it's unlikely to come out of that up until a few years ago we had a situation where we had sort of three or four pages of, a, uh, of adapters for hoses so today we have tried to make this hose fit internally or externally, or we can also take off this here and this system here clicks straight onto an increasing number of our machines. If you've got a um, vacuum cleaner full of dust and you want to move it around, you don't really want the hose 
um, and sometimes I need to unplug the hose because it's a little bit bulky with the hose coming out like this. So you can just take it off and, and use that plug. Uh, likewise, if it's full of water as well, mm -hmm. you don't want water slopping out of there. So very, very simple, bayonet tight fitting. So, you know, for the camera, I've made it look difficult. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I can edit that. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, don't do that. People love that stuff. <laughs> that's why they watch you. Because <laughs> you screw up on camera all the time. Exactly. No, no, that's really unkind. I am sorry. I do it off yeah. camera. And then, obviously, it's ready to go. Um, I won't patronise you by putting the pipes together and all that sort of thing. Um, it's, 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 this is one of my favourite, and it's worth a little look at this. Okay, so as you can see, this is normally used in this position. So if we just turn the, the head round, you can see that we've got a brush on the front which sweeps and then the dust goes between these gaps, immediately sucked up by the uh, extractor there. The rear brush makes sure that nothing passes behind. So that's fine for dry use. When it comes to wet use, we need to take the brushes out and then we took, put these two blades in. So when we put the back blade in, we want it this way round so it scrapes the water in but the front blade needs to go like so with these little grooves in the front so as the blade bends back it allows the water past if you put it the wrong way round it just pushes the water in front um, which is not very desirable okay so that's the the wet and dry head the brush nozzle for car cleaners this is fantastic yeah uh, yeah so you know those um air vents you get on the dashboard Mm -hmm. and you can never get between those oh. superb that's what i really like about this to start with and the fact that you get the cleaning stuff supplied with it yeah it's like and it's a comprehensive kit as well which yeah. is awesome um also the old extension tubes as well yeah what length does that go up to well the that. length so you don't have to bend your back too much when you're cleaning the floor so this is a perfect example matt of when you would dispense with that head and then just go straight with the click and clean system and like that and then that oh. allows you to just clean the floor or high spaces without bending your back so let's have a, a look at the machine um, obviously motor on top 1200 watt motor sucking up through um, dust will come out obviously up the hose into the bin the bigger particles the weighty particles will fall to the bottom of the bin the light airborne particles and bear in mind it's these particles that are really dangerous to health will then come up and the motor will try and drag them through the filter. Now, this being an M-class uh, dust extractor, then it has an M-class filter. And you can see the size of the filter here. It's a very large filter, which is washable, removable, and will need replacing from time to time. Hints and tips. I often see, or free, sometimes see, people cleaning these out, and what they'll do is they'll take that filter like that and they'll beat it on the ground. This is an absolute disaster because all it does is makes holes in the whole end of the filter there and renders it completely useless. So you would then have to buy a new filter and these are not cheap. Now I've never put a new filter in one of mine because I always use a bag and the bag will keep the filter clean and dramatically extend the lifetime of the filter. As I say, you can wash it, but if you do wash it, allow about 48 hours for it to dry. Okay, Matt, our favorite pet hate, the bag. Now, as you know, this is the bag that's supplied. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, it confuses people on how it's fitted. And you can probably see from here, we have three holes. So this one's pretty obvious. This is the one where the hose connects with. But these two holes are not really explained. And if you think about it, if you put this bag into the bin, and we'll show you how to do that in a moment, the top of the bag is open. So the bag can't protect the filter in any way. And of course there is a tendency for as the back is switched on, that the bag is just sucked up onto the filter. Yeah? And it's these two holes here that prevent that from happening. Okay. Um, I've never quite understood myself exactly how it works. All I know is these two holes must be inside the bin. If they come outside the bin, then you're going to get that problem. Right? Okay. And I've heard all sorts of wives' tales about put a brick in the bottom and stuff like that. <laughs> it's not in the instruction manual. You don't need to do it. Okay. Let's fit the bag. Yep. 
and then we can explain how it should be used. Sure. Okay, so release the two red clips either side and lift off the motor housing and don't knock the tripod. So we then take the bag, locate the large hole and feed that over the inlet. And you'll see here there's a, a flange, so just make sure it sits neatly over that flange there. And then simply push the bag in, then fold the top down all the way around. Make it nice and neat, and as you might be able to see, my two little holes are down here. Once that's all nice and neat, you then put the motor unit back on, put the clips on, and you're ready to go. Bag fills, right, but of course, as explained earlier, the filter is still trying to suck that fine dust up through it. So it's continuously trying to bring the stuff out of this bag that exactly. you vacuumed up through, yeah. Exactly. And then it's pretty obvious what happens then when the bag's full and you need to empty it. All you do is take the lid off and then you lift the bag up and you locate this strip here, peel it off and then you've got a nice sticky part there. You can seal the bag and you throw it away. Now you can use this vac without a bag. The problem with that is, is when you take the bottom bin to the skip and you tip it upside down, funnily enough, the dust then goes everywhere and everybody starts coughing, which rather renders the whole point completely useless. All yep. right? And the health and safety executive take a pretty dim view of that as well. So what's the solution? Well, the solution is, I'm not a fan of this. So my good friends in Germany, please listen. My colleagues, please listen. This bag, I don't like it. Let's get rid of it. I used it as a bin bag for my bin bag. Exactly. It worked brilliantly. Yeah. It's good for that. I mean, it's better than not having anything at all. Yeah. Because of course you can seal the dust into the bag and safely dispose of it. Mm -hmm. But what we really need is this bag. It's part of the Bosch range. Um, and hopefully you can see the part number. If you want to order these, um, that's the part number that you use. It gives a nice description on this side on how to fit it. It's not really that difficult, but this is a, a fleece bag and a, a, a Matt can feel the quality of that. You know, it's, it's, it's really robust. It's thick stuff. It's, it's very thick, thick stuff. It contains all the dust. It protects the main filter and it just changes the whole thing altogether. Once the bag's full, you carefully tease this off and then you just, I'm not gonna do it now because um, it renders the bag useless, but you just pull this here and this paper then seals the hole and then you can dispose of that safely. It's not designed for wet applications, but it's not the end of the world if you do use it for wet applications. It doesn't completely fall apart. We do do a bag specifically designed for wet applications. So if you're picking up slurry and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. we do a proper bag for it. But for most applications, you use the bin like so. You don't need to remove the filter. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and the vac will automatically stop sucking when you're full there. Yep. Nice thing then is you can then wheel it to where you're going to dispose of it and then tip the water Check away safely. Pretty self-explanatory, push it in, take the two wings on the side, then I always put my knee against it like that and just make sure it's teased. If you give it a little turn like that, you know that it's actually covered that flange on the underside as well. You ready to go? Very good. So as for this bit coming in, you've got, what's that little probe there for? This little probe is an earthing point because obviously, although we've got an anti-static hose, there is a tendency to build up static and it yep. allows that to earth away. You know, bear in mind, sometimes people use these with angle grinders as well. And um, yeah, it could get interesting. Yes, yes. And then it's angled down here as well. So that point coming in. Yeah, I mean, as, as you say, Matt, if you're picking up really big pieces of brick or concrete or stuff like that, it comes flying up the hose and then hits the inside there rather than the back of the bag. Because if um, so in the old days, it used to blast its way through yeah. the back of the paper bags. You know. um, the only bags I hate more than the, than the plastic bin liner is of course the paper bag, yeah. which is, is useless. But yeah, it hits that deflector and then drops it down. 
Um, but yeah, that's the way it works. One thing we haven't yet mentioned so far, Matt, is this um, red button here. Um, this is called the AFC, Automatic Filter Cleaning, which is a standard requirement for M-Class vacs. What happens is, if you're using only the bin liner bag, as we said earlier, that dust starts to clog that filter. So every 15 seconds, we have what's called a back flush. Air is blasted through the vents at the top here, back down through the filter, thus pushing dust out of the filter. And you will hear that, um, as I'll demonstrate in a second. <laughs> Okay, that happens every 15 seconds, um, and it, it can get a little bit annoying. You'll notice that the little light comes on, again, another requirement for M-Class dust extractors. But again, if you're using a fleece bag, you don't need that. Mm -hmm. So it's very simple. Turn it off, turn it off. Um, so it's a real benefit for everybody, you know, not to have to put up with that annoying noise and we do a 55 litre version of this as well yeah and if you think it sounds although the, the the motor unit is the same if you think it sounds loud on this you've got the the, the acoustic thumping of this big 55 litre yeah. drum as well and the actual size of the drum on the 55 litre actually move um but yeah uh, it, it's good to be able to turn that off so you turn that off when you're using a fleece bag yeah the fleece bag off bin bag on, no bag, on. So every time the dust is able to get to the filter, that's when you want to turn it on. Shall we say the best till last? Shall we be slightly facetious now and tell them why it's flat on the top? Oh, we could do. Yeah, go on. Okay, so um, let's get on to the really serious stuff. We have a nice flat surface on the top with a recessed handle, which is handy. Front and back, we also have two uh, mountings which we can mount on our toolboxes so you can mount two or three toolboxes on that and make it very very comfortable to move stuff around as well we also do an open bin which I particularly like for the sliding miter uh, sorry the rail saw so you can clip that on when you finish cutting on the rail you just drop the saw in there and it can't fall on the floor which is nice but for me the most important thing is that uh, of course you've got somewhere to sit down. That is literally what I use it for Absolutely. most. Absolutely, and, 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 and drink your tea. Yeah, perfect height for this bench as well. Well, all joking aside, I was doing some detail routing yeah. with the palm router um, last year, and I found that if you sat on this, not only was it the right height for the bench, but you had uh, that as well. So yeah. maybe it's just me, I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> somewhere nice to sit down as well. All joking aside, that is important. Oh, massively. Yeah. It's great. It's perfect for that. I don't have a seat in this workshop and that is my only way of actually resting my legs. And the fact you can wheel around while doing it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. But some people might think that's being a bit, bit funny, but actually it's really, it's no, really it's, important. It's a me. luxury. So one of the questions I always get asked at Axminster, and I'm sure you do as well, is can I just use a standard vacuum to extract from my power tools? Would you care to answer that? Yeah, the answer is of course you can, but there's a problem. Your phone rings. Your phone rings. <laughs> yeah, can you use a standard vacuum cleaner? Yes, you can. But the problem is, as, as we said earlier, the dust comes in here, and we're not picking up household domestic dust now, you know, which is dog hair, something the, uh, the baby spilled on the floor at the mealtime yesterday, and, and all the normal household stuff, okay? The filters in a, a, a domestic vacuum cleaner are designed to handle that. They are not designed to handle wood dust, hardwood dust, oak, beech, all those kind of hardwood dust, which many of which are, are carcinogens, um, dust from MDF and stuff like that. But the worst baddie of all is if you're drilling, sanding, cutting, uh, breaking stone. This contains silica. And silica, it doesn't take much imagination to understand that silicosis of the lungs could be associated with the inhalation of silica. Um, respirable crystalline silica is a killer. The health and safety executive figures say roughly five people a week are dying of ingestion yeah. of silica, so it's pretty serious stuff. So if you imagine you're using a normal domestic vacuum cleaner, 
The dust comes in, it keeps going until it gets to the filter. All the household dust can be filtered out by the filter, but silica is very, very small particles and will pass right through. Now the real insult to injury is that the dust extractor will then blast that out all over the room. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and that's the reason why you should absolutely not use uh, a domestic vac. Yeah, and so I kind of class it down to two types of dust. I say you've got a nuisance dust, which is the stuff you see on the floor and it makes it look messy. That's what a standard vacuum would clean up and this would clean up. And then you've got the airborne hazardous dust, yeah. which your standard vacuum would not do. And this, of course, will. Yeah, because the filter is fine enough. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the points to note are for that kind of construction type work, you need an M class vacuum cleaner. Um, we, of course, in our range do L class as well. That's uh, for the less hazardous stuff, yeah. Um, but you will see those on the construction site as well, unfortunately. But we are pushing very hard um, to, to, to get, encourage people to use the, what, the correct tool. What are the regulations now on M versus L class on site? You shouldn't really use L class on construction sites. Yes, people do. Um, they're a multi-purpose type uh, cleaner just as an insurance policy or to do the best we can all of our dust extractors L and M all have M class filters right mm -hmm. I stress very strongly an M class filter does not make an M class vac but we just thought it was better to put M class filters in everything um, and in, in our 18 volt uh, dust extractor we've gone a stage further and put a HEPA L-class filter in there as well. Um, unfortunately, at the moment, we can't move the volume of air required by M-class regulations on a cordless vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. We're working on it, don't hold your breath, but we're, <laughs> we, we really are working on it and we plan to, 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 to launch something like that as soon as it's possible. Great. Matt, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk through this with you. Oh, it's been um, a pleasure. I mean, you know, when you spoke to me about it a few months ago, I didn't know, I didn't know so many bits about these. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like an absolute idiot, to be honest, but yeah. It's... No, not, not at all. And the fact that people like you are asking gives us a great opportunity to pass that on to uh, everybody out there. And thank you very much for that opportunity. And I didn't want this very much, I really didn't want this to be a selling pitch. I want this to be something that you must think about, guys, for your own health and well-being. I'm lucky I've got away with it. These young guys, like Matt here, have got a lot of life in front of them that we want you to enjoy. Very nice. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you very much. So I'm going to be doing a review of this extractor at some point in the future. So if that's already out, a link will be in the top corner. But yeah, otherwise, I hope you found the video useful and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Not me. <laughs>